Okay, today on what to do guys, we are just going to go over some um, problems that you may have with your carburetor if your blower or your weed whacker is either A, not starting, or it's stalling out, just running rough, or when you're giving it gas, it wants to bog out, or you have to keep choking it to, keeping it, uh, to keep it running. Now, I'm going to apologize right away if this is a lengthy video. We're not going to talk about anything outside of these problems, but there is different things that can go wrong, so I apologize if your problem doesn't happen to be the last thing we talk about. But I want to try to cover most of the things that uh, a homeowner can fix, all right? Because a lot of people, when they can't start these machines or the machine starts stalling, they throw them out in the garbage and um, they run to the store and they just buy another one. So, but this can save you a lot of money and it only takes a little bit of time to do what I'm about to show you, all right? So let's jump into it, all right? So some of the, uh, the, the first things you wanna look at is when your machine is not starting is you have these hoses, all right? These are, this is common. Now, this is the fuel filter, okay? This is what drops into your gas tank. If you're looking at your unit, you have two hoses coming out of your gas tank and you'll have this grommet here which plugs into your gas tank like that okay one's an inlet one's an outlet these both go to your fuel pump all right these get this one's actually really hard and uh these get really really brittle over time or they get like uh little cracks in them or sometimes you know these fuel filters there's a little clip on them these clips come off and your fuel filter comes off or these filters just get really clogged all right, now I did, I did do another tutorial on uh, how to remove this in videos below, but um, this is definitely something you wanna check because this is common and these things are really inexpensive. You can get these at any lawnmower shop. You basically just get a flathead screwdriver and you pry it up out of your gas tank. You disconnect these two from your carburetor, take your gas cap off, or actually if you've already pried this grommet up, this fuel filter will pull right out and your assembly. I mean, you could literally change this in a matter of a minute and a half. It's that easy, all right? But check your uh, your lines. Okay, that's one reason why it may be running rough. Now, getting to the carburetor, okay, we have a carburetor here, which is already off. If you have a Red Max machine, you can look at a video below, which I had just did a tutorial on taking these off. Now, in this tutorial, we're actually gonna take this apart so we can describe uh, what you need to look for and fix it to get your unit running like new again, all right? Another one of the things you wanna look for is you see this primer bulb, all right? See the, the, the fuel coming out, all right? This is what pumps the fuel into your system and primes it when you get ready to start it, right? Well, a lot of times, and you'll know, if you're pushing this and it's wet around here, you know you have a hole in the primer bulb. If you're pressing this and this is going flat, okay, you probably have a problem with your diaphragm in here, which I'm going to show you next. Um, your diaphragm might be bad, all right? Or you also wanna check, again, your fuel lines here, okay? That's another thing that can go wrong. These bulbs are really easy to replace. There's just four screws right there. And again, we're gonna get into that in a second. All right, now, what you wanna do once you get this off, and we'll start dismantling this now, but I'm gonna show you the pieces. I already have one disassembled here. Okay, and you can see I have a bunch of carburetors that I will be doing the same thing to. So let's assume you've already watched my other video and you got your carburetor off. All right, now, a lot of people look at this and they panic because they're afraid to take this apart and they think all these little pieces are gonna fall out and it's gonna be very difficult, but that's, that's not the situation. These are actually very simple and you can literally take this apart, clean it, put it back together and have your weed whacker and blower running like new in probably almost a half hour's time. It's that simple, all right? So let's take it apart and we'll discuss uh, each piece and the problem and how to clean them and so forth as we go. And another thing that can be causing this to run rough is if you look behind your air filter, if your carburetor's not off yet, look behind the air filter at your carburetor where your lines are coming in, 
all right, you're going to see this little black hole. Now, sometimes there's going to be a little black plug in there, and you'll have to get that little plug out, but underneath of that, there's a little screw, which you could use a little, little, tiny flathead. Um, can you see this? Like that, that you would get for like an eyeglass repair kit. You can stick that in there, and that's actually an adjustment screw. So while your machine is running, you want to turn this clockwise, maybe to just go in really small turns, maybe an eighth of an inch, and see if that uh, helps your machine run a little bit better there. But <clears throat> that adjustment screw has worked wonders in the past as far as fixing really uh, rough running machines, okay? If you have that black plug in there, what you can do is get a lighter and make your screwdriver really, really, really hot. And you can stick this in the plug, let it cool, and then you'll be able to actually pull the plug out. Or you can get a little, little tiny drill bit and drill a hole in the center of it too. But don't go down too far because you don't want to strip out that screw in there. But that adjustment screw there, um, you can try adjusting that too uh, while your unit is running to see if that helps it run any better. All right, we're going to start by taking off these four screws here on the bottom. They are Phillips head. I'm going to use a drill. Um, these screws can be a little tight sometimes. So if you have this little screwdriver set, that's good. But sometimes these get so tight that you can't get enough grip on these little screwdrivers to take these off. All right, so you may want to get a screwdriver with a bigger handle on it so you can get a nice grip. But also be careful, these are small screws, you don't want to strip out the heads on these. So we got our screws off, and now we want to pull off this primer bulb. Alright, and underneath it there you will see your diaphragm. Alright, you want to, don't press on that too hard. This is supposed to be nice and soft and have a little bit of squish to it. Uh, if it's really solid, or if this is all ripped up under here, uh, you, then you definitely want to replace this. This is one of the common things that do go bad, and it's so easy to replace. You can see the, uh, the I don't know if you can see the fuel coming out of there when I press on this. But that uh, diaphragm there is actually connected to a, uh, a metering valve, which, um, or it's, it's almost like a, a seesaw kind of, and it uh, that's what moves your needle up and down in the carburetor all right but these are common this is one of the most common problems that go bad is these from sitting over time the fuel sits in here and these get really hard and stuff okay and you can just peel this one up which i'm not going to peel this one up here this one seems to be good but you can peel this one up and put a new diaphragm on um, going back to the primer bulb all right this is pretty much what uh, creates the vacuum in your system so when you press down, it's actually pushing uh, fuel out. And then when you release, it's uh, sucking in. And it's creating that vacuum and priming this carburetor, getting the fuel in the areas that it needs to be. I'll do a separate video on that, on pretty much how the, uh, the fuel um, flows through the system. But essentially, there's a little port right here on the side where the fuel will go down into there and then it's gonna run through some of the veins in there. And there's little uh, flaps under here that will actually guide this fuel into a reservoir over here. And then it will come down through the reservoir into the uh, carburetor itself. But uh, the bulb's very important. Um, if you're not getting that vacuum, and you'll know when you're priming this, if you look at your fuel lines as you're priming it, you will see the, the fuel coming up and going down and creating that pressure in the system. If you're not getting that, then you have something wrong with either your lines or your uh, primer bulb is bad or your diaphragm under here is bad. Okay, now next, we are going to uh, remove these two screws on the top where your throttle assembly is. It's just uh, two Phillips heads right there. All right, we have those two screws loose. Now this will just pull straight up out of there. Okay, and you can see there is a uh, the uh, long needle going down through the center of it. I think you can see that. All 
All right, set that down. And then inside of there, you will also see it's white. If you see it straight down in there, needle in this one slides right down over the top of the other one there. Okay. And sometimes these get clogged up with debris and stuff. So we will go over cleaning that in a second. Now, the uh, fuel pump here, I'm going to show you. These can be really, really tight to get off. Um, I've had them sometimes just come free. But what I do is I have this sitting in a vise. And I know a lot of uh, mechanics are probably going to cringe right now. But just so you know, this is not tight at all. I just kind of set it in there enough to where... I can move this with my hand just like that to uh, separate that, okay? There's literally no pressure on this vise. As you can see, I can move this, all right? Because you don't want to go crushing your fuel pump in the vise. Okay, now that we have the fuel pump off, you can pull that off. And another common problem you will have is in this big oval part here, this big circle, there's a screen. Okay, a lot of times that gets built up with corrosion. Uh, so you want to get some, you know, carbon choke cleaner and maybe some air. And you want to try to clean that up a little bit. If you have a, a really, really soft little tiny brush, you can use that. But usually some carbon choke cleaner is what I use. And I'll put my finger just halfway over it and I'll blow it with some air. And the reason I put my finger over it is because you don't want to blow this screen out because you probably will lose it and be kind of difficult, hard to find. But that's one of the common, common problems there, is that screen getting clogged up. Next thing you want to look for, which I just saw on the bottom of this one, is you have another gasket here, all right? This gasket, as you can see, this is all tore up. So that's what the problem was with this one. But it has all of these, I don't know if you can see that, but it's all these little cutouts and these little flaps serve a purpose. All right, and it's to guide the fuel through a certain path, through these veins, through the carburetor. And when this gasket gets destroyed, or any of these little flaps get torn um, or damaged, it affects the fuel flow, and that can be a problem with your carburetor as also. Now, when you buy a rebuild kit, you're pretty much going to get all of these gaskets, all right? And that's really all it is to rebuilding the carburetor, is just replacing these gaskets. And they all will come up, you know, you get a little screwdriver, you can pry these up. And this one's pretty much off already. Let me see. Yeah, this is tore up. See how the gasket is all stuck to there and this is all tore up? So the gas was not flowing through the proper channels. It was pretty much going all over the place in here. And I can tell you now, that was the problem with this carburetor. But... I will get a brush and I will clean all this up and uh, get some air and clean out all of these uh, these ports here. This one in the center here, you want to blow some air through there too, because that is your valve that we saw earlier in the center down there. So you want to make sure that that's clear. All right, you can also check this gasket here. This is going to come in your rebuild kit. All right, and make sure that there's no uh, tears or damage done to this one. This just pulls out also, and you can pop a new one in. But you want to make sure that this is looking good and it's seated in there firmly. That's pretty much the carburetor all disassembled. So now going back to cleaning it, okay, we have all these pieces here. All right, but the most important parts that come clogged up, um, when you look at these, these all have these little holes, these little ports in them, okay? And all of these ports lead to these little veins that run through here. And these are things that get clogged up and prevent your fuel flow, all right? So you wanna spray this down, get some carbon choke cleaner, get some air, and you wanna just blow some air out and, and blow all of these ports out and get them nice and clean, all right? If there's anything lodged in there, any, <clears throat> any dirt or anything, it's certainly gonna affect it. And uh, be very gentle when you get to this diaphragm um, you can see it's very, very soft, okay, and this could rip very easily, all right? Um, but that's very important. Make sure that that is uh, nice and squishy there, and certainly make sure that that's not um, peeling up anywhere, because this basically <clears throat> is where uh, your vacuum metering and everything is created, your fuel metering, 
with this diaphragm. And those are some of the things to look for. I didn't really dig into the science of everything. I feel like that should be a whole nother video. But to get this apart, um, it took a lot longer in the video, but if you know what you're doing or don't know what you're doing, um, it's still really simple. It should take you maybe a half hour if you're totally unexperienced and you're doing this, then maybe an hour, hour and a half, but it's really simple. Sit down with a cup of coffee, take everything apart, lay it out, take pictures, put it in order when you take it apart. If you're worried about not remembering how it goes back together and all those items will help you and um, just examine it. And then you can go buy a little rebuild kit and get new gaskets and put them all on. It's not really hard at all. And I know it might be a little bit confusing if you're just watching it for the first time. Um, I was a little bit all over the place, but those are some of the things you want to look for in your carburetor. And it's not, you know, throwing it out in the trash. I just, um, you know when it can only take you literally 30 minutes of your time and just just to uh put these new gaskets and seals in and checking your primer bulbs and stuff like that it's it's a pretty simple job and you don't have to go buy a new weed whacker or a new blower all right but um hopefully this helps and again if you're looking more of the science of things of how it actually works um i gotta do a couple drawings because i want to explain it properly to where it makes sense so I'm going to do that in a separate video, all right? But uh, please, hit subscribe below, give me a like. I do these videos daily, and I hope this helped out. I'll see you next time.